Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Church Council will be meeting in Miss Evelyn Hunt's classroom when service is completed today. And children, kids, trunk or treats almost here. Tuesday, two days from now, trunk or treat. Uh, those who plan to participate, give out the treats. Of course, we'll be doing it in this parking lot over here beside the Family Life Center. We would like for those of you who are, like I said, participating, uh, be prepared to come and park your vehicles at 5 o'clock. That's when we will start getting lined up at 5 o'clock. Be prepared for the kids who will start arriving at 6 o'clock, or some maybe before. But our plans are 6 till 8 o'clock. For foods, if you will, please bring some hot dogs and hot dog buns. When you start coming early, about 5 o'clock, go ahead and get those into the kitchen. They have some that will already be cooking, but you bring yours and they'll get cooked next in line. Tyler Sane. Yes, sir. Yeah! All right. <laughs> we the, need you here next Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> but Tyler Sane this Saturday night, beginning at 6 o'clock. Uh, the featured groups will be the Sycamore Singers, Pierce Family, the McNeils, and of course the Tylers. And our mission team will be selling food before, during, and after. Uh, they will begin as early as 4 o'clock. The Christmas gift boxes and bags that the WMU are collecting, those are due next Sunday. So please have your bags and boxes or if you're making a monetary donation, or if you're just buying items to drop off into collection boxes, uh, please have that done no later than next Sunday. Kids choir practice, that's ages four through 12, next Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. And on this Wednesday night, Bible study starting at 6.45, we'll have a spaghetti dinner beginning at six o'clock. So come out. Next Wednesday night. Not this Wednesday, not this coming Wednesday. I'm sorry. November the 8th. November 8th. November the 8th. Spaghetti dinner, free of charge. We'll accept donations. Those donations will go to the Brotherhood and WMU Fund. Applications are being accepted for the new discipleship leader staff position. Anyone interested in that can find more information on the church website. Any other announcements? Thank you. If I can give them straight. First, um, next week we're going to honor um, Veterans Day. Uh, Major Stevens. I know some of you have uh, wondered why I don't announce who's going to be speaking when I'm not speaking. We're going to do better at that. I'll do much better at that. So Major Stevens will be our guest uh, speaker on next Sunday. If you don't know him, drive down Stone Road before you get to the stop sign. He lives right there on the left. He retired as the ROTC instructor at Fairmont. Is that right? And he's been here before. Uh, he's retired, so he's not going to be doing a demonstration with other ROTC kids. But he's been here before. We're delighted to have him. He's also a minister of the gospel. And so he will carry the message as, long, as well as the presentation. Also, two weeks from today, we have a long, our guest today. We are so thankful you're here. Uh, we are so glad that you've come out. Many of you have come out to support some of these who are being baptized today. It's going to be a long service, but it's going to be a blessed service because we get to observe the Lord's Supper. We also get to experience baptism. Because it's a long service today and next week being 
uh, our observance of Veterans Day, the following Sunday, two weeks from today, we're going to give you ample opportunity at the end of service. I'm talking to the church members who's received right hand of fellowship. We will give you ample opportunity to fellowship, to spend time speaking with people as they begin to leave, but we're going to need you to stay in for just a few moments. We have, as you heard the announcement for the, uh, the new staff position, we have a search committee according to the bylaws. We followed the bylaws in putting together a search committee as you would if it was a pastoral search. And we, according to the bylaws, we need your approval of this committee. And that's all we're going to ask for is approval. So if we stay, it shouldn't take but two or three minutes. Uh, we'll get your approval or your non-approval. <laughs> if, if it's not approved, we'll go back to the drawing line. But, um, but we'll, two weeks from the day, just be prepared to stay, church members, for a few minutes right after service. <laughs> it's time to enter into our service. Uh, we have candidates for baptism. If they are in here today, we want them to come up at this time. Our candidates for baptism. There should be about eight of you. Isn't that great? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> come on back. Let's do this. Uh, you get on this side, all of you on this side. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do this. Yeah, there we go. Ah, that's good. We're waiting on one more to come up. You can stand right here beside me. I'll, I'll trip over you. <laughs> okay. So you have witnessed each one of these make a profession of faith to you. And it's been, it's been very recent. So... They have contacted me in the last week or two and shared that they wanted to be baptized today uh, during this opportunity. So they're still in fellowship with the Lord, still, yeah, <laughs> and, and excited about this day and what this represents. And we are excited also, aren't we? Yeah. Amen. Amen. So it would be in order at this point that we would enter into a business session. Do we have such a motion to enter into a business? We have a motion to enter into a business session by Brother Don. We have a second by Brother M.H. Uh, any concerns about being in this business session? Hearing none, seeing none, all in favor, let it be known by saying aye. aye. Any opposed likewise? Motion is carried. Now... Because upon their profession of faith, what we know is according to Scripture, the very first act of obedience for a believer, a new convert, is to be baptized. And they are come to be baptized. It would be in order that we would receive a motion, receive a motion at this point, to extend the right hand of fellowship to each of these uh, into the ordinance of baptism. We have a motion by Brother Cleany. Do we have a second? Somebody said, Brother Lawton uh, offered a second. Any questions? Any concerns? Hearing none, seeing none, all in favor, let it be known by saying aye. aye. Any opposed likewise? Motion has carried. Do you all mind me starting over here? <laughs> okay. Uh, for our guest, just to give you a heads up, don't, don't be offended. When my mind goes to uh, working, it can get confused. <laughs> I think they understand. So if I don't get the name exactly right, it's okay to help me out. Okay? <laughs> uh, Brother Memphis Locklear, <laughs> it is my privilege to extend to you today the right hand of fellowship on behalf of Reedy Branch Baptist Church and to the ordinance of baptism. God bless you. Mr. Braxton Locklear. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> it is my privilege today on behalf of Reedy Branch Baptist Church to extend to you the right hand of fellowship and to the ordinance of baptism. God bless you. Brother Connor Chavis. <laughs> it is my privilege on behalf of Reedy Branch Baptist Church to extend to you the right hand of fellowship into the ordinance of baptism. God bless you. 
Miss Kasari, Kasari, right? Kasari Clark. <laughs> it is my privilege to extend to you, on behalf of Reedy Branch Baptist Church, the right hand of fellowship into the ordinance of baptism. And Miss Raylan Hammonds, on behalf of Reedy Branch Baptist Church, it is my privilege to extend to you the right hand of fellowship into the ordinance of baptism. God bless you. Well, for such is the kingdom of God, right? Amen. 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 <laughs> and Brother A.J. Locklear, that's Anthony Jr., right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it is my privilege on behalf of Reedy Branch Baptist Church to extend to you the right hand of fellowship into the ordinance of baptism. God bless you. Brother Caleb Maynor. <laughs> Boy, they start getting bigger on this side, don't they? <laughs> it is my privilege on behalf of Reedy Branch Baptist Church to extend to you the right hand of fellowship and to the ordinance of baptism. God bless you, brother. And Brother Justin Hunt, it is my privilege on behalf of Reedy Branch Baptist Church to extend to you the right hand of fellowship and to the ordinance of baptism. God bless you. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Upon the profession of their faith, they will be baptized uh, later at, uh, after our Lord, after we observe the Lord's Supper. So at any point during the service, they're free to, to change. When we get ready, just so you'll know, when we get ready to come back for the baptism, I'd like you three to, to go through this door. And you five to go through this door. And the parents that are going to be with these, the ones that are going to be with them, um, uh, you're welcome to come in at that time as well. Let me say this as y'all are sitting down. <laughs> you're free to sit down now. You're free to sit down now. Um, let me say this. We do our best to try to make sure that the families are able to see the um, baptism, and we have them on the screens. You'll be able to see that curtain will be raised. We want it closed for Lord's Supper because the picture behind it is a picture of Jesus' ascension. During the Lord's Supper, we're honoring his death and his um, burial and his resurrection. We've not got to the point of the ascension. We'll raise it for the baptism. <sighs> Families, you're welcome to stand up when your family member is, is coming to be baptized if I happen, and it's likely I will. So if I happen to not remind you of that, feel free to just stand <laughs> at that time. Feel free, you're not going to offend me because I know how flawed I am. All right? Now it would be in order that we exit our business session. Do we have such a motion to exit the business session? We have a motion by Brother Michael. We have a second by Brother Jerry. All in favor, let it be known by standing as our choir leads us in a song of worship. Good morning and welcome, church. Let's sing to God's glory. This is a lot of Hold it to God's unchanging hand. Changing hand, you got to hold to his 
I was telling uh, Brother Don yesterday when I was in uh, Highway Patrol School, they gave us, they said they can do what called a verbal judo as far as speaking. And uh, they said it's two things you don't say good morning and good evening. And they say, why is that? Because you fix them write them a ticket and it ain't going to be no good morning. <laughs> Well, he ain't gonna be no good evening. So they had us said morning, evening, morning, evening. But it might not be a good morning for some people. But we're gonna be reading today from uh, John uh, chapter fourteen, verses one, two, three, and sixteen and seventeen. One, two, three. 16 and 17. But uh, it's a busy time. It's a troublesome time. Yes, it is. We talked about it yesterday a little bit. Yes. And uh, I wouldn't be right if I didn't mention we've got a lot going on as far as deaths in the church family. But if you were here last Sunday for homecoming, The first person here, I thought I got him was Stanley Locklear. To clean that chicken, cook those eggs, peel those potatoes for you to be able to eat. That was last Friday. He was here Friday morning, first one. Sunday morning, first one. And uh, that's a blessing. That's a blessing. You know, a lot of things goes on that people don't know what's going on. They just assume. But that's the reason when we do the uh, getting your own committees or getting your own uh, teaching or whatever at the church, you get, a, you get a bond with those folks. You get a bond with those folks. So, you know, that was a uh, shock to me. It's hard to, you know, Granny, I just left him. But, you know, the Lord don't have no respectable person. He can take us at any given time. And, uh, it's just, he was a servant. God knows his heart. And he was a, he was a good worker, servant for the church. And, uh, you know, some says, well, I had, talking about believing in the, in the comforter that we have. You know, an unsafe person might say, well, how can, how can, Jesus be Jesus, how can he be Lord? Or how can he be Christ or the Holy Spirit? How can he be all these, all that? Have that headline of all those names. Same way that you can be a father, you can be a son, you can be a brother. And then, and I had uh, heard this week that, uh, you know, Dr. Uh, Stanley, I was looking at one of his uh, videos, Charles Stanley, and it says, uh, well, who do I pray to? You know, you, you get, do I pray to Jesus? Do I pray to Christ? Do I pray to the Lord? Do I pray to God? <clears throat> Call out any of them's name, baby, because all it's the Trinity. That's right. All of it's the Trinity. But I'm so glad that we have a comforter today that uh, when you can't sleep, he don't never sleep or slumber. That's right. And he's sitting on up high. He's on the throne. He's looking down at me and you. And he don't just, he ain't just shining his light some Robson County. He see worldwide what's going on. When he comes back in all his glory, won't that be a blessing, brother? Yes. That'd be a blessing. And you know, the older you get, or you know, I've I've uh, 64 years old. I've had one stint put in a heart attack. I don't know when he's going to take me, but that's fine. I know where I'm going because he's made me a promise. He said he'd come back and get me. He's going to come back to get me. But uh. Here in chapter 14, you know, this is about the fourth occasion that Jesus talked to the disciples and he was getting them prepared. And it says here, it says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it was not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and I, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And then over here on 16 and 17 says, And I will pray the Father, 
and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But you know him, for he dwelleth in you and shall be in you. Friend, if you're unsaved today, or if you're saved, you say, well, I, sometimes it just don't feel right. When you do something wrong and something convicts you, that's the Holy Spirit convicting you. But we thank the Lord for his comforter. We have a few uh, prayer requests here today. It might be on the screen. But uh, remember Miss Bessie Harden in prayer? She was taken to the hospital in Dillon around midnight, and she would be transferred to McLeod in Florence. Continue to remember Miss Debbie Freeman's family. Continue to remember Brother Paul Watsonine's family. Continue to remember the family of Brother Stanley Locklear as his visitation tonight at Revels' in Lumberton, and the funeral will be tomorrow at 3 p.m. here at Rita Branch. Continue to remember Brother Chris and Miss Vanessa Chavis and their families as corner services will take place Tuesday afternoon with a visitation beginning at 12 noon through 2 p.m., and the funeral beginning at 2 p.m. The services will be at Roberts Community College's auditorium. And we want to continue to remember Miss Christy Locklear and her family as they're mourning the passing of her father. Do we have any more requests at this time? He's Remember the Jacobs family, Sycamore Sanders, I'm going to tell this morning, uh, one of my brothers had passed away early this morning, so remember that family, Linda Blue. Anybody else? Yeah, remember William, we're going up to um, Chapel Hill tomorrow, and uh, they're going to make a decision as to what can be done to regulate his heart, so um, just pray that it'll be... Uh, as least invasive as it can be and that the doctors will finally find out what's going on. It's been going on for months now, ever since the summertime. So just remember him in prayer. Anybody else? Amen. Amen. Remember our church family, and we got a bunch of events coming up between 9 and January. So it is going to be in and out, busy, busy, busy. So remember each and every one of our church family. Maria. Remember my wife as uh, she gave the, the seal special this week about her eyes. Remember her. Okay. We need to really, really pray for this world, for this war to stop it. Uh, just, uh, we need to not have no more war. Brother, you're very, very correct. We were, we were also, I, you got our, we was talking about our armed forces that protects our country on the outside, the United States. But we got a war right here in our, with our people, here in our county. I mean, it's, you can't even drive down the road without these cars wanting to shoot at you. It's going on. They'll slow you down and, be careful when y'all traveling. It's, 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 it's sad. I, I said, you know, back when I came up, Daddy loved you, but he said, I'll kill you before you outdo me. That's what, he, that's what them old folks would do. Now they don't even fear the Lord, so they're not going to fear you. They don't even fear you. But we, remember our young people. We got, we got a lot, they got a lot going on. And uh, 
you know, through sickness and through death with some of them. You never know what, until you sit down and talk. They want somebody to love them. They want somebody to love them. So let's keep our young folks in. Brother, since, since we're all wearing pink, I, I think we should keep those that are suffering from cancer and those that have recovered in beat cancer. Amen. Let's keep them in our prayer. Amen. 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 Shall we pray? Father, it's again, Lord, we thank you for this day. This is a God-given day that you have given us. We thank you for this group that your Lord has gathered here in your name, not our name, in your name. And Father, the baptism, the ones that have made a commitment of faith to you, and those, the Lord, there might be one here today, the Lord, that don't know you as Lord and personal Savior. Father, we just hope something's said or done. We just convict our hearts, the Lord, that they've got to give it up and accept you, the Lord, in their life. The Lord, it's so easy, the word says, the child can understand. Father, we thank you for the, what you have done for Rita Branch. We thank you for all the things that you have given us, the Lord, throughout the years. And, Father, we ask you to remember all the requests, the Lord, that's been brought up here today and unspoken, the Lord. Father, we, we know that you know the hers on our heads and the ones that fall out. The sands on the ocean, little car, you created it all. And, Lord, we belong to you. And, Father, we don't owe you nothing. Oh, you don't know us nothing, Lord. You, you don't know us nothing. We don't, we don't see that, there, Lord, because we belong to you. And, Father, you can take us at any given time. Dear Father, there's loved ones that's gone. There's friends that's gone. But, Father, one day, the Lord, if they have accepted you as Lord and Savior, we'll see them again. And, Father, we, we thank you for the hope and the faith and your mercy and grace, the Lord, that you have poured out. And, Father, we just thank you for, again, for our pastor. The Lord has got a lot on his plate, the Lord. Just comfort him and his family, his wife and daughter, the Lord, as they see fit to work with one another, the Lord, so he can work with us. Father, guide him each and every day. Hide him behind the cross, the Lord, that when he stands, the Lord, he can be bold like a lion. And for the words that he gives us from your word will be like a honeycomb. And again, the Lord, we just thank you for the singing and the remainder of this service. Go with us, lead God, and direct us. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Jesus is coming soon. Worship with us.
It is, it is good to see each one of you with us today. Uh, I think today I'm going to force these technicians to work a little bit. I can't get too loud on my own. Uh, my voice is about gone. This, uh, this cough that I've had for almost two months is, is now beginning to work on my voice. So, so do keep me in prayer. Um, as we do have these two funerals this week. Um, so much going on in people's lives. And we, we can't get too caught up in our own lives because somebody's hurting and somebody needs a hand. Somebody needs someone praying for them. We get too caught up in our own mess we don't think of nobody else. When we know that God's got everything in our lives in control, we can focus on the lives of others. If you have your Bibles, turn with us to the book of Luke, chapter 7. We're going to read today uh, verses 36 through 39. 36 through 39. <laughs> this may not appear to be a passage that you would expect to be centered around the Lord's Supper, but we'll try to tie it in if we can. Because it's an invitation. It takes an invitation to come to this table. And the only invitation that matters is the invitation from Jesus. And the only way to get that invitation is to know him as your Lord and Savior. If you don't know him as your Lord and Savior, let this cup pass. But if you know him as your Lord and Savior, you are welcome at this table today. You know, a pastor was invited to a dinner during the meal, he was astonished to hear the younger daughter of the family state that, the, that a person must be very brave to go to church these days. The pastor was a little stunned and he said, why would you say that? The little girl answered, because I heard daddy tell mama last Sunday that there was a big shot in the pulpit. The choir murdered the anthem and the organist drowned everybody. <laughs> if you didn't get that, think about it, you will. Yeah, it'll come to you. <laughs> you know, she wasn't talking about Reedy Branch because our, our, we have an awesome choir and our musicians are great. <laughs> but... We have to be careful what we invite our children to hear. If we're not careful, they're going to repeat us, and it's going to be an embarrassing situation. <laughs> when we look at the text today, we do want to focus on the invitation. The Bible tells us in verses 36 through 39 in chapter 7, the Gospel of Luke. Then one of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him. With him. And he went to the Pharisee's house and sat down to eat. And behold, a woman of the city who was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at the table of the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil and stood at his feet behind him weeping. And she began to wash his feet with her tears and wipe them with her hair of her head. And she kissed his feet and anointed them with the fragrant oil. And when the Pharisee had invited, who had invited him saw this, he spoke himself, spoke to himself saying, this man, if he were a prophet, he would know who and what manner of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. This is God's holy word. God, as we thank you for this day, 
We invite your presence to be strong in this place. God, we pray that knowing that you are already here because there are so many born-again believers here, you've told us in your word you'll never leave us, you'll never forsake us. So wherever we are, God, those of us who know you through your son, you are there. You've promised us in your word that where two or three are gathered together in your name, you would be in the midst. So God, we're calling upon you today. Move and minister upon each and every heart that is here. And God, may you be glorified in everything that we do. God, as you speak to each heart, we're going to trust you for your faithful and true. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we think on this passage, what we know is that a Pharisee by the name of Simon, he had invited Jesus to dinner. And now Simon, being a Pharisee, he was more likely to be a wealthy man. We must understand that the hierarchy in the Greco-Roman society, it comprised of the wealthy and certain family structures for anyone who were in leadership positions. This also applied to the Jews as well. So many scholars believe that in that day, it was easy to spot a home of someone who was wealthy. Often their homes would have had an open courtyard and the public would be able to, to stand in that courtyard whenever guests had come to this wealthy person's home. They were able to stand in that courtyard so they could hear the discussions, especially if it was a rabbi. Someone who was influential was in the house. Staying true to himself and to his purpose for coming to earth, Jesus accepted the invitation from this religious leader. We must remember Mark 2 and 17, Jesus says, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So Jesus didn't shy away from sinners. He didn't shy away from the religionists of that day. But sadly, too often, the religionists failed to see that they were spiritually sick. And they had a real spiritual need. So as we briefly look into this text, we can see the spiritual problem with this religionist. This Pharisee invited Jesus into his home and he treated Jesus as if Jesus should have been privileged or honored to be invited into this man's home. How do we know that? This man was not hospitable at all to Jesus. He failed to show common courtesies to Jesus as a guest in his home. How do we know? Well, in verses 44 and 46, Jesus says, I entered your house and you gave me no water for my feet. In verse 45, he says, uh, you did not give me a kiss. He says, oh, you gave me no kiss. And in verse 46, he says, and you did not anoint my head with oil. These are common courtesies for any guests that you would have in your home during Jesus' time of walking on the earth. But he didn't get any of these courtesies extended to him. We would say that this man was rude to Jesus. It appears that this man was just filled with pride. Now the Bible doesn't say just why the man invited Jesus to his home. But it would appear that he wanted the attention of Jesus being there. He understood Jesus had developed a large following and, and he, would want, he would want this attention so that he could say, I. Many of us like attention when we can say I. Many of us like the attention when, when that personal pronoun I or me can be used because it puffs us up. It says what we have done. Here this man was saying, look what I've done. Look what I, look who I had in my house. Jesus of Nazareth has, Nazareth has spent time and he has taught in my house. His spiritual problem was that of pride. 
Someone once said, for pride is spiritual cancer. It eats up the very possibility of love or con contentment or even common sense. Let me say that again. Pride is spiritual cancer. It eats up the possibility of love or contentment or even common sense. Oh, that's saying a lot about a prideful person, isn't it? It makes me wonder if in today's society, if there's anyone who's ever professed Christ as their Lord and Savior, but on a regular basis, they find themselves like this religious man. What, what I mean is this, that how many professing Christians are rude to Jesus? How many fail to show him the common courtesies that he deserves regularly? Uh, <laughs> let me say it this way, can I? How many are eager to, to tell people that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, but you have trouble on Sunday morning finding your Bible because you don't know where you put it the previous Sunday afternoon? What I mean is, can we really remember... Can, uh, <laughs> What I mean is they, they can't remember where it was at. And, and so that lets us know they haven't opened it. They hear from Jesus all week long. How many can only call on Jesus or try to talk with him when they find themselves needing him? In other words, how many treat him like a genie in a bottle? How many only attempt to apply his principles to scripture in their lives when it benefits them? Now, I know this doesn't apply to anyone here. This only happens in, in other churches. Not the ones who are visiting, but other churches, you know. There's no evidence of anything like that ever taking place, really, is there? Whether we realize it or not, when we are born again believers and never take time for God's word or seldom genuinely pray or fail to apply God's principles to our life, we're arrogantly saying, I don't need to be close to him. I don't need him every day and every moment of my life. We see that on Facebook posted by so many people and I want to ask the question, but I won't because it's really none of my business. It's between them and God. How often are you talking to him and how often are you allowing him to speak to you? Folks, when, when we don't want to be in Bible study, when we don't want to be in Sunday school, when we don't want to be in worship service, when we don't want to be in fellowship with our church family, when we don't want to, we don't want to serve unless the, I'm able to lead and give instructions when it, and, and everyone has to see me. When I, can't, when I can't follow or be submissive in this life, whether it's at church, whether it's on my job, whether it's in my home, we have to know there's a spiritual problem. Yeah, and it's sin. And it's the sin of pride. But you know, there's good news. There's very good news. Because in this text, what we can clearly see is that we can deal with our spiritual problems. And we see it in the text by noticing the spiritual progress of a repentant sinner. You know, the scene shifts from this arrogant man who treated Jesus like a nobody to this woman who is repentant in her heart. This woman is described as a woman of the city, a sinner. This would indicate that what she was what many of us would call a woman of the night. Oh, I'm, I'm telling my age, ain't I? A woman of the night. A prostitute. No, she didn't invite Jesus into her home, but she heard where he would be. And she grabbed what may have been the most, the most prized possession or the most expensive possession that she owned. And she went to seeking Jesus. Now, we must understand she knew where she was. She knew who and what she was.
She knew the looks that she would receive walking into this house. So why do you think, what do you think drove her to this home, this wealthy man's home, and fall at the feet of Jesus? Undo her hair, and as she is weeping, wipe his feet with her hair and continually kiss his feet. It's not hard to see. This woman was desperate. She was gripped by her sinful condition and under heavy conviction she was. It seems that she was heavy laden and she had to find him because she knew that he and only he could give her rest. She was so desperate for rest, so desperate for peace, so desperate for love. Despite who she was and where she was at, despite the gossip, despite no one wanting her around, despite the possibility of being thrown out on her head, despite this, she was determined to approach Jesus. So before they could stop her, there she is at his feet. <sighs> Humbly, she submitted herself to Jesus. And she showed she was willing to sacrifice all that she had for him. She brought this alabaster flask with her and poured out an expensive fragrant oil on Jesus' feet. And then wiped it up with her hair. Her display of love and affection, brokenness and devotion, it resulted in Jesus receiving her. The Bible tells us in Psalm 38, 34 and 18 that the Lord is near those who have a broken heart and he saves such as has a contrite spirit. Let's get real for a moment. We're only able to deal with our spiritual problems when we become broken over them. If we're not broken over them, we won't deal with them because we don't think there's anything wrong. Somebody better say amen because you know that's true. It's the most truth I've said. If we don't feel that we are wrong, if we're not broken over our issues, then we're not desperate. But when we are broken... We become desperate. It's, our despera it's in our desperation that we call out to God and we will genuinely seek him and his forgiveness. It won't matter where we're at, who is around us, what others may say. When we are desperate, we will cry out to Jesus, what must I do to be saved? And you can believe that if you call on the name of the Lord, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And when you truly experience his forgiveness, you'll find that you want to be devoted to him. It's when you realize who you are and where you're at and what he has done for you. And you may ask, well, what has he actually done? Well, he left the splendor of heaven. He came to this sin-cursed world. He submitted himself and lived in full obedience to his father. And he gave himself to be beaten, cursed, and crucified for you. He laid down his life and God raised him from the dead. And now he offers this same resurrection power to raise you that raised him from the grave. And when this becomes real to us, we will devote our lives to him and to his service. Are we in his service? As the musicians are preparing to come for this invitation, you may be thinking, wait a minute, preacher. You don't know what I've done. You don't know where I've been. You don't know all the devil I've played and I don't need to know. As a matter of fact, I really don't want to know. Because you can, I can assure you that God knows. And that's all that matters. And he will forgive you. How do I know? This woman was guilty of her sin. We don't know how far she had gone. But what we know is that Jesus saw her desperation and her devotion. So when this Pharisee spoke within himself... Of Jesus letting this sinful woman touch him. Jesus came to her defense. He'll come to your defense. You may worry about what others say or think. But Jesus, <laughs> he isn't worried. Because he knows all about them too. He knew 
all about this man's selfishness, his self-righteousness, and his pride. So Jesus reminded Simon that this woman was hospitable to him. She showed common courtesy to him. For it was this sinful woman who wept and washed his feet. It was this sinful woman who would not cease from kissing his feet. It was this sinful woman who anointed him with this expensive fragrant oil. He forgave her much (laughs) and for it she loved him much. Listen, if you're ashamed of your life, listen, he'll change your life around, give you a new life, and I trust you when you experience him forgiving you much, you'll love him much. So what about you today? As every head and every, is bowed and every eye is closed, what about you today? Are you tired? and desperate I want you to know that if you are Jesus is inviting you to cast your cares upon him for he cares for you and if you receive him today he will invite you to this table where you can sup with him where he'll sup with you Couldn't find one willing to be the supreme sacrifice that was needed. Do you believe today? Do you believe that he will save you from your sin? That there's nothing that can separate you from his love? Oh, he would love for you to experience his love today. Would you come and receive him for yourself? drank it for you oh his love for you is greater than you'll ever you'll ever know Sing with them, would you? Had it not been for a place all bound Calvary, had it not been for the unrugged cross, had it not been. 
you remain standing and as God is ministering to hearts I want to give you an opportunity that if if there is something in your life right now that you need to get straight with God before we open this table if you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior but you feel like there's something separating you from him that would prevent you from taking this taking part in this supper I want to give you an opportunity to just get that right with God and to walk out on this supper is to deny Jesus Christ I want to give you every opportunity to not deny him today so right now would you would you just talk with Jesus and settle whatever it is He's, he'll be faithful to you. Just trust him. Would you talk with him? We thank you, God, for being patient and kind. God, we thank you for being righteous and just. For God, if you wasn't righteous, if you wasn't just, the flesh that we're in would just want to live any kind of way. We'd want to do anything that our heart's desire would be. But God, we know our heart is an evil thing. And we don't even know our own hearts. But God, we know you through your word and through the power of your Holy Spirit. So God, right now we call out to you. Asking that you would help us. That God help us to live our lives in such a way that when the world sees us, they see you. They see your son through us. That we're not in the way. We're not preventing our neighbors, our friends, our co-workers, our family from coming to you. Help us to never be a stumbling block, God. Help us, God, to be a a witness of your glory, your majesty, your love and affection. God, we come to you at this time as we are getting ready to partake of this table. God, search our hearts and convict us, God. God, we love you because you first loved us and you demonstrated that love and that you sent your only begotten son to die in our place. So God, as we continue in this service by partaking of your supper, God, we give you honor and we give you praise. Help us, God, to not... 
Help us not to overlook the significance of this invitation to your table. And for those who have yet to know you through your son, Jesus Christ, God, continue to call them, continue to invite them into a life where they can experience your glory for all eternity. Help us in this, we pray. In Jesus' holy name, amen. You may have a seat. We're going to ask our deacons, if they would, to come up. Brother Don has said, those of you who will be baptized because of your profession of faith. We know some churches, they hold that you must be baptized first. But if you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are welcome to this table today. But again, if you don't know him, I caution you. I urge you. Don't partake of this supper. Allow God to move and allow him to minister to your heart. I guarantee you, if you're here and you don't know Jesus, he will speak to you today through this supper. Trust him. He's faithful. In the week of the Passover, so many things happened that week. And as the week got closer to the end, Jesus told his disciples to go find a man. Tell him the master has need for his room. And that was an unusual request to go find a man and just tell him your master has need for his room. But God is in control of all things. He's a sovereign God, and he not only was working in those boys to be obedient to Jesus, but he was working in the man who owned the room. And he provided this room for Jesus and the disciples. The Bible tells us while they were there, Jesus washed their feet. (laughs) Peter, being so bold and brash, said, you're not touching my feet, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. And Jesus said, if you don't allow me, you'll have no part of me. Peter said, don't just wash my feet, wash me from head to toe. (laughs) Jesus was demonstrating to us that as ministers of the gospel, which is what you all are that knows Jesus as Savior, We are called to serve one another. Jesus, after washing their feet, they sat down at the table. He took the bread and he broke it. The Bible says that he blessed it.
Brother Curly, would you pray over this bread? Gave him the bread. We're praying for them.
you have your cup. If everyone's been served, feel free to take the top layer off and to grab that wafer. bread represented Jesus' body. There are some traditions who say that the bread became his body whenever they partook of it. In the Christian tradition, we don't believe that. We believe it represents the body of Jesus. There wasn't a broken bone in his body. He was the fulfillment of scripture. But it was broken in humility and shame. And it was for you and I. So that we could be part of him. It's his body. Eat. Bible says that he took the cup brother Brian would you bless this The blood that Jesus shed for us has the power to take us from this world into eternity. It has the power to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It has the power to where we stand before the Lord, it's as if we've never sinned. But the only way to receive that power is to receive Jesus as Savior. He applies the blood to our lives. And when God the Father sees us, He sees us through His Son's shed blood. I'll never be spotless on this side of life. But 
one day I'm going to leave this world and I'm going to go home and when I get home I'm going to be made whole just as he intended me to be when he formed Adam out of the dust of the ground because of the blood I have that assurance today drink we thank you for taking part of this supper with us if you can reach one of the places in the pew in front of you to where you could set your cup that would be fine but we will have trash cans at the doors uh, um, when we get ready to leave out. So uh, if you can't, if you don't have a space to set it, just hold on to it. We will have trash cans at the door. Thank you, guys. We shared earlier that the first act of obedience that we could ever perform that pleases God once we accept Jesus as our Savior is to be baptized. That's the first command that's given. Be saved and be baptized. We live in a world where time hinders sometimes for that to happen immediately. But we are so blessed today that these eight have come to be baptized. And we're going to ask them to come on back up as we go ahead and start making arrangements. Parents can come with their kids to these doors. We want the, the kids on this side, the, the adults over here. And Caleb, you're big enough to be considered an adult. You may not be old enough, but you're big enough. You can go right there. <laughs> We, it, it, we're blessed today. Uh, Brother Jerry Locklear, pastor at Faith Baptist Church, his grandson, Memphis, is being baptized today. And I remember what it was like when I got to baptize my daughter so glad that God fixed it in a way to where I had that opportunity right here so I've invited brother Jerry when he said he was coming for the baptism I've invited him to assist as Memphis gets baptized I would want to take that from him so we wanted to give him the opportunity to make a decision and he has decided to help us with the baptism and we're so delighted that he is so we're he can come. Uh, I told him we don't have to get undressed and get in a pool. We, here we get to take our coat off and roll up our sleeves. And we're able to, to go in the back. So, brother, you can join me. If there's something you'd like to say, you're welcome to.
Aren't you glad you stayed? I know it's getting late, but this is so important. Our Lord and Savior has commanded us to, to do this, and it is our honor to be able to be a part of a baptism service. One day, I hope we do like they did back in the early 90s, to where they've got a line of people waiting to be baptized one Sunday that got, went out the door. I believe God's got a revival coming. And when that revival comes, we can see it now already across the nation. We see it even in our county. People are getting saved. But I believe there's more to come. There's more to come. We're going to ask at this time if, if Brother Roger, I know he's in here, if he'd stand and pray over this baptism. Thank God what it means to us, Father. But most of all, we thank you what it means to those that have been baptized, Lord. We just thank God that you, you sent your son into this dying lost world and made us all possible. That when the blood of life is applied to one, Father God, yeah. and obedience to your command, after they accept your son Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior, it comes to this service. Come and be baptized, Lord. We once again, thank you for these that's going to be baptized. And Lord, just pray with the team of this month. To you on high, Father God, and to continue to minister to them, Father God. Not only continue to minister to them, Father God, but Lord, let them know that we love them. Lord, we know you love them more than we do, Father. And Lord, we just pray for their families. Pray for their group, Father God. You can continue to be with them. Lord, and as they baptize, being baptized today, Father, we thank you, Father. Amen. 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 So, Connor. At this time, would the family of Connor Chavis, you're welcome to stand at this time if you'd like. Connor, come to me one Wednesday night, right after Bible study. I, I hadn't even got to the back, and he met me. And he said, I need to talk to you. They told me I need to talk to you. I said, Connor, can you give me a minute? He said, okay, but I need to talk to you. <laughs> uh, got a couple of things that, was, that, that I had to just get settled, and we went to my office, and and I believe he was already saved. He was just coming to my office to confirm it and share it with me. And we talked. And I had no doubt that God was working in this young man's life. And I believe God's got much more to do for him. So it is my, pri my privilege today. In obedience to the command of Jesus Christ. That I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay. You can go now. Walk in newness of life. <laughs> Amen. The family of Miss Kasari Clark, you're welcome to stand at this time. There you go. There you go. Turn and sit here. Okay. Those who were here last week, as we gave the invitation, two of these kids came immediately. As soon as I began the invitation, one come around that corner. <laughs> And he was there, and before I could turn my head, there was Kasari. She loves to sing. She loves her church. She loves her family. And it is my privilege today that in obedience to the command of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to baptize you, our sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
go and walk in newness of life. Amen. The family of Miss Raylan Hammonds are welcome to stand at this time. <laughs> Raylan was with Connor that day, <laughs> that Wednesday night. So when he came, there she was right there with him, wanting to meet with me. And when we got in the office, uh, <laughs> Connor done most of the talking. <laughs> But then when I, I turned to Raylan and I asked her, Raylan, do you understand what you're saying? And she said, yes. She accepted Jesus as her Savior that night. And today, it's my privilege in obedience to the command of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to baptize you, our sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now you can walk in newness of life. The family of Braxton Locklear, you're welcome to stand at this time. Put your feet in. Put your feet inside the door. There you go. Uh, what a privilege it was to see last week as he turned the corner. As soon as we started the invitation, coming to give his life to Jesus. I've learned something about Braxton and his brother. They, they look a lot alike, and I'll sometimes mix their names up because they're the same size. And, and I've noticed that they've got so much respect for their sister. You know where respect comes from? It comes from fear. <laughs> and if their mom and dad's not around... <laughs> If Kendall's there with them, they don't move till she says so. <laughs> she has to give them permission, and they honor that. And I hope and pray that all their lives, they will be close. And today, Braxton, it is my privilege, in obedience to the command of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to baptize you this day, our brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It is. And as Memphis is coming, we invite Memphis family to stand. I uh, at home one day, he came by after one Sunday and said, Pop, I said, what? He said, I got saved. <laughs> I said, say you did. He said, yeah. He said, I got saved. So it wasn't very long after then, not some week or so back, he came back to me and said, Pop, I said, what? He said, I'm going to be baptized. <laughs> I said, say you are. He said, yes. I said, good, I said, that, that's great. So he asked me, he said, are you going to come? I said, sure, I'm going to be there. Sure, I'm going to be there. So uh, he came down to it to fifth Sunday, where we're having communion as well. Said, oh, well, it's the first time ever be missing that. Uh, after all the many years, I said, but I, someone else can handle that. So uh, I came, so 
I think it was sometime at the first of last week, it was mentioned about being baptized. He said, uh, you know, I said, said something about me baptizing. I said, I didn't say anything to Jerry Lynn. I said something to him. I said, Memphis? I said, now, now, do you sure you want your pastor to baptize you? He said, or me. He said, he'd sit there and he thought for a little while. I was taking him to school that morning. He said, I want you. I know it was a hard decision for him to make. But he said, I, I, I want you. I said, okay then. Okay. So, uh, I'll tell you what. It is a blessing. It is a blessing to see your family stepping out, serving the Lord. Serving the Lord. So, Brother Memphis, on your testimony that you have chosen to serve Christ as your Savior and your wishes to be baptized, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Brother Jerry said that that was a lot better than, than having to get in the pool with them. <laughs> um, yeah, Memphis come to me on a Wednesday night. His mom had talked to me maybe a week before or a couple of days before. He shared that he, he had questions and that he was really concerned about being saved. So when we talked with him, he understood more than I did at his age. And he gave his life to the Lord. We're so glad that we have the opportunity to be part of his life and to be able to minister to him. You know, we get to minister to these kids as they're growing up. It's now our duty to disciple them. They've made a profession of faith. They boldly shared it through baptism. Now, Reedy Branch, it's our, it's our job to help them grow to know the Lord and to serve the Lord. We thank y'all for this opportunity. Who's coming first? They're almost starting to play rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you sit there, put your feet under there. At this time, we invite the family of Brother A.J. Locklear to stand. We're so delighted at this. We, we had a conversation one day in my office. You know, I've told y'all more people have chosen to serve the Lord in the office setting than on Sunday morning coming to the altar since I've been here. That conversation, I never knew it would turn into the direction that it did, but as soon as I asked him, do you want to be saved today? He said, yes. And when I asked him, would he be able to be baptized? He said, yes. He said, he missed the last one because of work. He said, I won't miss the next one. And he's here today. We thank his family for being here. Is there anything you want to say? Yeah. So in accordance to the word of God, Upon your testimony and in obedience to the command of Scripture, we baptize you this day, our brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Go now and walk in the newness of life. <laughs> AJ didn't take out his grandfather we know Mr. Thomas Earl he doesn't talk nearly as much as Mr. Thomas <laughs> but we do want to remember Mr. Thomas in our prayers the family of brother Justin Hunt you're welcome to stand at this time <laughs> brother Justin was here when I came he was a senior in high school at that time. Now he's a grown man living on his own and got a career. Not just a job, he's got a career. And on Pastor Appreciation Sunday, 
something similar happened to him that had happened to me. I couldn't remember nothing that the preacher preached about because the Lord was talking to me. Justin told me earlier this week, that this past week, that that's what was happening. And he was just so glad when the preacher was finished and we gave the invitation. I'm so glad that he, in obedience to the Holy Spirit's call, that he rededicated his life and and now he's following in baptism. Anything you want to say? So upon your profession of faith and in obedience to the command of Scripture, it is my privilege to baptize you this day, our brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, can I get your face? Okay. Uh huh? You sure? Okay. Amen. 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 In the family of Brother Caleb Maynard, you're welcome to stand at this time. We were in the mountains uh, last month. I got a text from Caleb that says that he wanted to give his life to the Lord. I said, Caleb, can you take a call? This was around 8.30 in the morning, 8.39 in the morning. I said, can you take a call? He said, I'll call you after school's out. We hung up the phone and I was concerned. I thought about it a couple hours later. I should have called preacher Adrian, who's at Lumberton High School as the guidance counselor, and had him go to where Caleb was at. And at that time, school was getting close to being out, and I knew it would be a difficult task for Brother Adrian. So I just began praying that afternoon that I would get a text or a call. When he got home, I got a text that said, Preacher, I'm at home now. So I went ahead. I was in the middle of something. I can't remember what it was. I said, give me five minutes. And I I called him, and he answered. I believe the Lord had already done what he had to do. It was just a matter of of Caleb just acknowledging it and, and trusting it. And he did in that conversation. And the next week, he was ready to share with you his salvation. And today, he's come to be baptized. You think you want to say? <laughs> so, upon your profession of faith, and in obedience to the scriptures, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, it's my privilege to baptize you this day, our brother, In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 (laughs) Go and walk in a newness of life. Oh, isn't this a joy to be able to, to baptize this many, but also to be able just to witness somebody has said to the world that I belong to Jesus and Jesus belongs to me. Again, we thank you for being with us today. We don't depart. We don't depart in prayer. What we ask is that as Brother Jerry plays something, that you turn, you shake a hand, you let someone know you're glad they got to see you today. And as you go out, go out loving the gospel. Living the gospel and sharing the gospel. May God bless each one of you. Have your attention for just a moment, please. (laughs) Too late. On Tuesday night, if you're coming out for trunk or treat, if you're not participating in giving out treats, 
Please park in this parking lot over here as long as the space is available. The door will be open. You can come through the church to the Family Life Center. Native American attire next Sunday?